County Fairgrounds here in Cool K. Do I have John Shaw on the line with me? Yes, this is John. Hi, Mr. John. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> Busy, normal. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've interviewed you before. You're a magician. I have. So, aren't you performing in um, Las Vegas now? Yes, I'm in actually three different shows here in Las Vegas currently. Oh. Okay, give me a little bit of a where. <laughs> uh, all right, so I perform uh, daily uh, Thursday through Monday at a place called the Zach Bagans Haunted Museum, um, which is in downtown Las Vegas, and I perform there from 11 to 6 every day. And then um, I'm in a show called Late Night Magic, which is at the Orleans Hotel and Casino, and that's every Thursday, Saturday, and Monday at 10 p.m. And then on the, the days where I'm not doing those, that show, uh, I'm in, I perform a theatrical seance show at a place called, called Lost Spirits, which is located at Area 15 here in Las Vegas. You know, you're making me tired. <laughs> uh, I make myself tired. <laughs> okay. Have you ever done anything else? for a living besides being a magician? Um, yeah, I mean, I had a few, like, odd jobs here and there. Um, you know, coming up, of course, you know, before you can make a living at this kind of stuff, you have to do, you know, other real things uh, to support yourself. Uh, so I've worked uh, from everything from construction to working in movie theaters, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, basically, I took jobs that I didn't care about. So that I, if I had a gig, I would I could just easily walk away from any of them. Uh, but basically, I've been performing professionally uh, pretty consistently since I was 23 to 25 years old. Okay. So what made you decide that you wanted to be a magician? Uh, I got into magic when I was uh, well, I was first exposed to magic, I should say, when I was in kindergarten uh, at an assembly. Uh, I grew up in New York, and there was a gentleman who came to uh, the school and was trying to teach us about science, but he used magic tricks as a way to entertain us to show us science. And I really fell in love with the magic at that moment and then was just obsessed. And at that time, David Copperfield uh, was kind of the, 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 the new guy on the block after Doug Henning had stepped away. And uh, so then my parents, who also liked magic, um, we would watch the yearly David Copperfield magic shows on television. And uh, eventually I bought a magic kit and then uh, kind of just went from there. Now I do shows for him. <laughs> oh, what do your parents think of all this now? Um, well, my father is no longer with us, but my mother is. And uh, my mother, you know, she loved it. You know, I, I get to travel the world. I do TV shows, you know, I'm, you know, on billboards in Las Vegas and on cab, cab back advertisements. So yeah, it's pretty great. So do you take her with you sometimes? <laughs> I do. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. No, I've taken my mom to on trips when I perform on cruise ships. I've flown her out with me so that she can go on, uh, go to the Caribbean for a couple of weeks with me, um, to Europe, all kinds of places. Yeah. Yeah, you sound like a good son to have. So, <laughs> well, my yeah, mom is a great, my mom is a great mom. So you know, because of her, you know, uh, being so supportive and stuff, uh, when I was coming up with this, you know, g growing into my present day career, uh, you know, it, she was very supportive and and told me don't give up. You know, even when times got really hard, she was like, you know, do what you got to do, but just don't stop. Hey John, is there any place you you've performed so many different places? Is there some place you would like to yeah. perform that you haven't had the opportunity? Uh, probably Egypt. I think that oh. would be super fun to perform in Egypt, uh, and also in the Amazon. I would love to go up into the Amazon, into the jungle, and perform for people who have never seen magic before ever. That sounds scary, dear. I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I do scary things for a living, so I'm not really. Uh, yeah, you just, you, you do know. some unusual things. Do you want to tell our listeners a little yeah. bit about some of the unusual things that you well, do? Well, besides, yes, besides being a, a magician and an illusionist, I also do circus sideshow stunts, 
which are neither magic nor illusions. Uh, so everything from, you know, fire eating to sword swallowing and everything in between, um, hanging, you know, paint cans with fish hooks in my eyes and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I, I do a lot of dangerous stunts as well. Okay, John, how's your health? <laughs> my health is great because, uh, really? I, yeah, I take care of myself. Yeah, yeah, I take care of myself very well. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I don't do any of the stupid things that other people do to make their life harder. <laughs> oh, no, you just swallow fire and do things like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I get paid to do those things. Nobody pays you to drink liquor. <laughs> <laughs> so what what is the hardest trick that you think you've ever done that took you the longest to work, and did you almost give up on it? Um, the the stunt that took me, took me the longest, and I, I hold a world record for it, is um, – the largest object passed through the human tear duct. So I can take <laughs> unpopped popcorn kernels and I suck them up my nose and I can force them out through my tear duct. Doesn't that hurt? <laughs> yes, it does. But pain oh. is temporary and world records are forever. <laughs> oh, did you get money for the world record? <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, you don't work in entertainment for free. What would be the purpose of that? So, so how old are you, Mr. Shaw? I'm curious now. I just turned 51 this year. And how long do you think you're going to keep doing this? Until I can't do it anymore. Oh, you're addicted. Oh, yeah. Why Why would I want to do anything else? I mean, why would I want to retire for something that I get so much joy out of? It seems silly. Um, all the entertainers I know, like nobody you know, really wants to retire. The only reason they usually stop is because they physically just can't do it anymore. Um, oh. But with me, because of the nature of all the different kinds of things that I can do, I could go for a lot longer as long as I take good care of myself and stuff like that. So physically, I'm fine. So you got kids? I have, uh, no worries. No, no children. No wife? No wife. Nope. No girlfriend, no nothing. My life is very peaceful. Is that the way you've really wanted it all along? Um, I mean, I've had, you know, partners in my life come in and out. Some have worked with me in the show and stuff. But, uh, you know, uh, for me, I mean, marriage is just not something that uh, interests me. Mm. You're obsessed with what you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I get to... I get. I like to be able to come and go as I please when I want to do what I want to do and what, how I want to do it. So okay. Just, you know, that's, so, yeah, so I'm that's the county me. fairground and state fair person lady. Have you ever done any county or state fairs? Uh, tons. <laughs> okay, okay. Tons and tons. Pima County Fair, L.A. County Fair, North Dakota State Fair. Um, yeah, I mean, tons of them. <laughs> But you sort of like. I haven't been work. back to the fair circuit in a while, just because my shows here in Las Vegas yeah. uh, have <laughs> taken off so well that I don't I don't need to travel as much anymore as I used to. That was one of the things I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to stay home most nights. Um, but <laughs> you know, I'm always open to things. <laughs> Sounds like yeah, you're always open. <laughs> I got it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so so. Um, you don't get to stay. I mean, uh, how late does the Las Vegas stuff go in the evening? Um, my latest show usually ends around midnight. By the time I'm I'm walking out of the theater, uh, it starts at ten. It's over by eleven thirty because the show's an hour and a half, and then we have to do meet and greets and all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, you know, just kind of pack up a little bit. So by the time I'm by the time I get home, it's usually you know. Anywhere between twelve thirty, one o'clock in the morning. Are you lear are you learning new things to put into your act all the time? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, the new show we just reopened uh, our show, Late Night Magic. We were at a place called Lexus Park, and we were there through the whole pandemic. We were performing. Um, so as soon as uh, as soon as shows were able to open here in Las Vegas, they were limited because you could only have up to fifty people, which was fine for us. Uh, because the bigger shows couldn't open. So we were one of the few shows working in town at the time. And uh, mm -hmm. so we did really well. And uh, we we, we uh, started a show with just, uh, you know, a couple of friends. 
and then it started to take off. And then we've now moved locations and uh, production uh, companies uh, to a, a better property, which is at the Orleans. And uh, now we're in, in our own theater there. And uh, it's it's great. And we're always, okay. I mean, we're, we constantly tweak and add new stuff to the show, take stuff out, try new, you know, comedy bits and add new, you know, new illusions. I just put a new illusion in the show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we just did a private uh, command performance for David Copperfield uh, and all of his cast and crew. Uh, he had uh, asked me if he wanted to come see our show. He's been to see our show five times now, uh, but he wanted to see the new show. So because his his times for his show at the MGM overlap ours, we did a private show for him uh, on a night that we're not normally open to the public. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was super cool. We had some of the guys from KISS and um, all the other local entertainers there, so it was pretty great. Okay. How long is your show generally in, in these Vegas shows? How long do they last? It's an hour and a half. Ooh, the one at that's... the Orleans is an hour and a half. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the show uh, at at the museum, because I'm part, my show is part of the tour, that's only 10 to 15 minutes. And then the uh, seance show that I do is 45 minutes. So you do, you do some like circus thing acts kind of things. Did you learn from the circus to do these things? No, I taught myself. Ugh. Yeah, I taught. I, I'm completely self-taught because there was no such thing as the internet when I was a kid. So uh, I would, growing up in New York, I would go bug all the all the guys at Coney Island and any any circus that would come to come around. I would just go bug them and be like, Hey, show me stuff or tell me about stuff. And they, of course, they were like, no, get out of here, kid. Uh, so, um, eventually, I just started to figure out things on my own by watching. Oh, them. oh, you didn't go into the library and get a library book, in other words. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, no, not really. There was nothing there that was going to teach you how to eat fire. I just figured out that heat rises. So I'm like, well, I'll start out with really tiny little – I started eating Q-tips that were on fire, and that's how I taught myself. <sighs> Didn't it scare you? <laughs> yeah, but it was also exciting. You know, I was just I was so passionate about it. I just didn't care. I just wanted to do it. So, for me it was uh, it was more about learning it no matter what I had to do to get, to to learn it. It didn't the it just didn't matter. I just wanted to learn it. Did your mother watch these When you have a passion and a drive for this kind of stuff, it's it's really impossible to explain yeah. to people who don't do it why you do it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're talking. Like you're talking. Things. You're talking to me. I'm the county fairgrounds lady. I've been here since 1998. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So it's like I mean, you just you just know what you love, and you don't stop. You know, no matter how much adversity you come up against. I mean, during the pandemic, you know that hurt all of us who were performers. Yes. Because none it of hurt us me too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I know. You know, I know I have friends who, you know, work fairs and concessions and all that stuff. And they're all like, well, we don't know what to do. And um, yeah. so it was, yeah. it was really, it was really terrible. So I took that time while, while we had some months to do that we weren't allowed to perform. And uh, I just worked on new material. And then I had a lot of other friends here in town. The great, the, the entertainment community here in Las Vegas is so great. And everybody just started getting together and be like, well, you know, we have nothing, but we always complain about not having enough time to do stuff. Well, now we have nothing but time. <laughs> so then we started, we started, you know, doing Zoom things with each other because, you know, obviously you didn't want to be, because we didn't want to be in close proximity to each other. So we get on our computers and like work on ideas together. So that was super mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, uh, yep. and then the Zoom show became a thing, and I hated those with a passion. But, yeah. uh, but yeah. we all had to do them because you know what? It's like you know, this is our job. So, and people wanted to be entertained. They were sitting at home. They were just as bored as us, if not more so, because you know their lives aren't as much fun as ours half the time. So you know, we get to live the life that other people dream of. And for me, it's like, why wouldn't I want to just do that all the time? Okay, so if you had a a son or something, and they were really interested in magic, would you encourage them? Oh, 100%. 100%, yeah. I would encourage them to do whatever they were passionate about because I was very fortunate, and that's what my parents did with me. 
they allowed me to go out and fail, which you need to do. Um, I, I think a lot of people, especially younger kids, are, you know, they're afraid to fail. Uh, the most successful people in the world have failed multiple times, many, many times, because that's how you learn to be better mm-hmm. and, to, and yeah. to be the best. You have to fail. Okay. <laughs> so they allowed me to fall on my face, but they encouraged me to, give, to get up and, and keep doing it no matter how many times it, I wasn't good at something. So like, just keep and, doing it. Keep practicing. And your mother came and watched you learn how to swallow fire, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was the first person I ever showed. She did? Yeah, yeah. she was the first person I showed. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, she was the first person I showed. I was like, look what I can do. And she was like, oh, my God, what are you doing? <laughs> she's like, oh, my God, cool. you're going to hurt yourself. You know, cause she's, she's my mom, you know. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And then I, but I showed her how I was doing it and how it worked, and she was like, oh. She's like, how the hell did you figure that out? I was like, I don't know. I just played around with it and figured it out. And then she's like, wow, she's like, you're pretty good at that. And I was like, yeah. And then I just kept, I just kept going. And then as I got better, of course, I met other people who were good at these things. And then they were like, oh, you should try it like this. And that's the great thing about entertainers is, you know, the, the really good ones will always encourage you and, and help support you and, and you know, want to make you better uh, rather than, you know, thinking everything is a competition and trying to put you down. Okay, John. So... You're going to keep doing this? You're going to stay in Las Vegas now? Uh, well, I travel um, a bunch. I'm, I'm starting to work with uh, some new cruise ships and stuff like that. So I, I take my show in and out of town. And, you know, I do corporate events and all that kind of stuff as well. So I still do private events and shows. Um, you know, I'm not opposed to doing fairs and festivals, obviously, as long as, you know, uh, the deal is good. <laughs> I'm willing to leave town. But now it takes a little bit more for me to leave town than usual than it used to. But uh, mm-hmm. I no, I, I, yeah. I'm working on, yeah, I'm working on a new show right now with a uh, a new cruise line that I've been talking to, and uh, and we're we're trying to work out a deal currently. So then okay. I'll be doing like four month runs on a on a cruise ship, which would be super fun. All right. All right. So do you, you you I take it then you handle your own booking? Yeah, yeah. I I handle mostly everything myself. Okay. All right. Well, do you want to leave a number or how people can reach you? Yeah, they can uh, uh, they can reach me at johnshawmagic at gmail dot com. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram and reach out to me there at also at johnshawmagic. Uh, easy to find. Mm-hmm. So am I. Do you know how many emails I do meet every day? <laughs> uh, probably a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, John. I've enjoyed talking to you. We'll get this up, right. and um, yeah. hopefully you'll like it. Thank great. you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.